from the uh, University of Modern and Reggio Emilia in Italy. Uh, and um, I'm an external uh, contractor uh, of uh, Linaro. In particular, Linaro sponsors my uh, work on the uh, BFQ IO scheduler. And uh, accidentally, this presentation is about uh, BFQ. Um, in more detail, this presentation is about uh, uh, controlling I.O. Uh, in uh, enterprise environment. Uh, I will start by uh, with a quick update of the last achievements of uh, uh, BFQ. In particular, uh, BFQ is becoming uh, the uh, default I.O. scheduler in um, a few more um, popular uh, systems. Uh, so then I will uh, uh, move to um, the uh, performance of BFQ in, uh, um, with server workloads, so for enterprise settings, and I will show you that this, this performance is uh, rather good. The, there is um, up to a 10 per uh, a throughput boost. But, but uh, however, uh, BFQ is having a hard time uh, uh, being adopted in uh, the enterprise uh, in enterprise environments and so the first topic of this presentation uh, uh, will be this problem so i will discuss this problem a little bit uh, then uh, i will move to uh, what is uh, happening uh, from the, uh, let's say, so competition. And I will show you that uh, uh, Facebook has proposed two new I.O. controllers meant exactly for uh, enterprise uh, uh, use cases. And these two controllers combined together uh, basically provide the same service guarantees as BFQ. This is a little bit confusing. So, uh, especially because there is no documentation that uh, uh, tells when to use BFQ and when to use uh, the other controllers. So, um, the second uh, um, topic of this presentation uh, is um, this other issue, um, shedding a light on uh, this, uh, um, this um, situation. And I will try to do it by um, showing you a comparison between uh, BFQ and these other controllers. So as for the last achievements, uh, uh, BFQ is, has been adopted now also by Chrome OS, in particular in uh, Chromebooks that runs the uh, 419 uh, kernels. Uh, also, it is also Fedora switched to uh, BFQ. From it, it will happen. Uh, it is happening uh, from since F31. Uh, OpenSUSE is testing uh, BFQ, and results are rather good for the moment. And uh, finally, also Ubuntu is considering BFQ, and this is happening for the moment on a private thread. As for uh, server workloads, uh, this is the uh, current uh, uh, BFQ performance um, compared to the other solutions. Uh, for server workloads, I mean all the uh, multi-client applications. Uh, uh, that is, any application where you have multiple clients, multiple groups, uh, virtual, multiple virtual machines, uh, uh, containers, whatever you want. Any uh, set of entities that compete for a shared medium, for a shared st uh, storage medium. In these applications, uh, uh, BFQ proved able to reach from 5 per to 10 per higher throughput than any other available uh, solution. After this, these two new IO controllers showed up, but this is something I will talk about in a moment. Because the first thing I wanted to talk about is this one. So uh, BFQ is, um, mm, keeps going well with these systems that are adopting it. Uh, and it also has good performance with several workloads, so um, it is successful also uh, with um, enterprise environment. No. <laughs> um, some companies um, moved to BFQ, but the main players, not yet. Um, when I uh, have been, of course, uh, talking about BFQ with companies and proposing it, showing performance, and mainly uh, I have received these two answers from the companies that have 
that for the moment have not moved to uh, using BFQ for some use case or some application. The first answer is that uh, there is no problem. Um, some companies say so. Uh, and an important example is uh, Google. Um, of course, I'm talking about, uh, I have, I've been interacting with a storage manager in Google. Google is rather large, so um, this is not the whole Google, it's my slice of Google. Anyway, the uh, feedback I've uh, received is that uh, um, there is no problem in case of fast storage. The other answer is, uh, yes, there is a problem, but we have already solved it. Uh, this is the case for Facebook with these two new uh, controllers, and I will uh, talk about them in a moment. This is also the case for Google in case of uh, slower storage. Let's see in detail, uh, and let's comment on the first answer, uh, no need to control I.O. This is a sensible answer in case uh, the speed demand is lower than the speed available uh, from the drives. If the drives are so fast that one doesn't demand more than they can do, then every time some new I.O. hits a drive, it finds the drive idle. So everything is very quick and there is no need of, um, for controlling I.O. But uh, in all other cases, this answer is a little bit contradictory because uh, um, basically every company if it can afford new storage, uh, moves to new faster storage. When faster storage is available, usually uh, um, companies that need that storage move, upgrade uh, to have higher speeds, this is uh, usual. And apart from the initial shift from the move from uh, rotational to non-rotational uh, drives, uh, usually uh, when you uh, switch to uh, faster hardware, what do you get? Probably something below a 10 pair or uh, in the order of a 10 pair. But curiously, this is exactly what you would already get from your hardware now by just using BFQ with that 10 pair. Uh, anyway, it is hard to evaluate this situation because uh, uh, these company, uh, companies didn't share their workloads. As for the other answer, uh, Basically, uh, two policies also in this case from uh, these, um, these companies. One is uh, using private solutions for which the company doesn't share any information. This is the case for uh, Google. Uh, the, other, the other approach is um, using public uh, open source solution. This is the case of Facebook. In the first case, it's <laughs> rather hard to make any progress because if, if yeah, we don't know anything about that solution. It's very hard to make any comparison and that's it. Uh, but in the other case, uh, when the solution is public, it can be measured, it can be benchmarked. And this is exactly what I've done uh, with these two new IO controllers and what I have already done with the previous solution, obtaining that uh, five pair to 10 pair um, boost. But let's see this new control. So let's move to the second topic of this uh, presentation. These are the two new uh, controllers from uh, Facebook. Uh, the, they are for uh, C groups uh, V2. The IO uh, dot latency controller to uh, control latency and the IO cost controller which is meant to um, control bandwidth to provide guarantees in terms of IO bandwidth. Each of these controllers um, enforces an I.O. policy that has the same name as the controller. So there is an I.O. latency policy enforced by the I.O. latency controller and I.O. cost policy enforced by the other controller. Together, these two uh, policies provide the same service guarantees as BFQ because BFQ implements the proportional share I.O. policy and, uh, and or um, the, it enforces I.O. priorities and proportional share as well as priorities provide bandwidth and latency guarantees. And there is no indication on when to use uh, these controllers or when to use uh, BFQ. So uh, the goal of this analysis is first to find out how good or how bad BFQ is 
compare it with these new controllers. Second, uh, to um, give information um, for people to decide what to use, to know at least what is better to use. So I'll compare them first, um, I'll compare these controllers with BFQ first in terms of interface, then in terms of performance. As for the interface, the latency controller has a very clear interface because you just set the latency that you want to be met by the group that you want to help. That's it. Uh, with BFQ, you, don't, you cannot set directly the latency. You have to set uh, the weight of the process or of the group of processes that for which you want to have a given latency because uh, BFQ, in BFQ, um, each process or each group is assigned a weight and receives um, a bandwidth proportional to its weight. Uh, okay, so this is the comparison for with the IO latency. As for IO cost, the interface is identical, same interface. So there is a weight, you, you assign a weight uh, to, to every group. But IO cost um, also needs more parameters. You also need to provide some extra uh, QoS parameters. Uh, the, there is a cost model uh, which defines the cost of each type of uh, I.O. In addition to this model, of, you, you can use the default model. In addition to that, you can feed uh, the controller uh, with other parameters like target latencies for reads and writes and so tolerance on these um, parameters and so on. Uh, basically, the, probably the, the, the most important fact is that uh, uh, you have to use uh, you need a different configuration for each type of drive. So a certain configuration for hard disks, another configuration for SATA SSDs, another one for uh, NVMe SSDs, and, and so on. And this is where <laughs> the shoe pinches, because in the experiments that I made, we didn't make it to find any good configuration that worked for IO cost. In spite of the help of the author of uh, of this controller, and there is the link to the to the thread, and I will get back to this after the um, plots. Okay, so um, comparing the interfaces is probably not enough to know uh, we, which solution is better and when. So here is a comparison in terms of performance. Uh, com I compared BFQ with latency, the IO latency in terms of uh, latency, of course, IO cost in terms of guaranteed bandwidth, but also in terms of total throughput. Because when you want to control IO so as to guarantee individual bandwidths, you have to make choices um, on the order in which IO is dispatched to the drive which basically means that you cannot afford to dispatch IO to the drive uh, in the order that simply boosts the total throughput. Often you have to make some sacrifice. You have to say, okay, if I do this, I get the maximum throughput, but I lose guarantees on bandwidth. Then I cannot do that. I have to change the order to guarantee bandwidth and you pay in terms of throughput. I will show you the consequences of this. This is not needed for the test with IO latency because in the mm, uh, processes that need latency guarantees usually do occasional IO. So it, it's not something that perturbs the total throughput. It, total throughput is not an issue. I've run this test on uh, a lot of systems. This is a partial list of the systems that I have uh, tested. Um, SATA SSDs, NVMe SSDs, um, hard disks on several PCs plus an ARM server and, and something else. I've repeated this test on both XT4 as file system and BetterFS. XT4 because it's probably the mostly the most widely used uh, um, file system and it is hard to control IO with XT4 in many cases. Better FS for the opposite reason, because it's easier to control IO with, on better F, with better FS. I've repeated this benchmark also with both buffered, that is normal IO, and direct IO. 
uh, workloads have been chosen in case of latency uh, to make in workloads have been chosen so as to make it uh, as difficult as possible to guarantee a low um, latency. Uh, in case of bandwidth benchmark, the, the goal was just to cover uh, all possible combinations of the main types of I.O. Workloads were generated by two types of processes, the target and the interferers. Uh, the goal of the target was just to generate some I.O. to see what happens. So then to measure latency and bandwidth. The goal of the interferers was to interfere <laughs> with the I.O. of the target. So the goal of the target is to know what may happen to a generic process when it tries to do I.O. The goal of the interfere is to create the workload that interferes. Uh, the goal was to measure the performance of uh, um, these controllers, so several uh, configurations have been tried, several conf configurations for controlling I.O. The first is known, known. no I.O. policy, no I.O. scheduling. So no control at all, just as a reference to see what happens. Basically, this is the case in which you get the maximum possible throughput because the drive and the operating system, the, the IO stack and the drive are free to do the best thing possible to maximize throughput. Uh, latency known, that's the configuration to test IO latency. Uh, IO latency as IO policy, uh, known as IO scheduler, to leave full control to the IO latency controller. IO latency set for a minimum possible latency. Cost known, IO cost as IO policy, known as IO scheduler for the same reason. Uh, quality of service configured as suggested by the other and all weights equal. Known BFQ is the configuration for the latency test. Basically, no IO policy, BFQ as IO scheduler and real time IO priority for the target to give it the minimum possible latency. Proportional share uh, IO policy and BFQ as last possible configuration to test bandwidth. Uh, you can imagine that I've, <laughs> I've obtained a lot of <laughs> plots and results, tables and whatever, so I'll show you just a selection. Uh, results with only the last three drives in my list uh, before, only with XT4, only with buffered IO, then I will tell you quickly, briefly, what changes with better FS and direct uh, IO. If you want, I have plots for all the cases. And I think this is also, we can start with the latency results. Lower is better here. Um, these are the workloads generated by the interferers, sequential reads or sequential writes, while the target does random reads in both cases. Uh, this is the latency in case of uh, no IO control, uh, IO latency, BFQ. I think you can see yourself uh, <laughs> slight difference in performance. Um, in particular, uh, IO latency has the same performance as no IO control, which basically is saying that it is not working. Something is going wrong. The same happens with writes, essentially the same result. Um, this was uh, with the fastest uh, SSD. Th that one is a very fast SSD. If we move to the SATA SSD, which is lower, results are basically the same. It's even worse for IO latency because uh, <laughs> latency is higher than without IO control. For the rest, this, this result is, this, these plots are saying the same thing as the previous one. Results with the hard disk, again, about the same. Here, the actual problem is the scale. We are at more than four seconds, 4.5 seconds. So every single IO operation takes more than five seconds. A real problem. As for better FS and direct IO, um, results are about the same, even if uh, um, latency requires a little bit of uh, control on IO. Um, with direct I.O., uh, latency has control only with direct reads where the performance are the same as BFQ on non-rotational storage and worse on the hard disk. And this is all about latency. Things don't go well for that controller. Let's move to um, bandwidth results. Here uh, the uh, bars uh, show this. The uh, turquoise bars show the total throughput, the cumulative throughput for the interferers. The 
uh, this one is light coral. <laughs> light coral uh, bars show the uh, throughput enjoyed by the target. They, of course, the sum of the bars gives the total throughput. You cannot see uh, the bars for the targets here because with these weights uh, the throughput is so low that you don't see any bar, but from the numbers, I don't know whether you see them, here the throughput with BFQ is um, much higher than uh, with cost. Uh, for no uh, yo control, I'm not showing another bar because this, uh, these plots are already complex enough, but just show as a reference the total throughput that you get. And as you can see, it's higher because if you don't have to control IO, you are free to do the best possible thing to maximize total throughput. Uh, what else? The total throughput is higher with BFQ, in addition to uh, not only the target's throughput, but also the total throughput is higher. The same happens also here. It's in this case, the total throughput with BFQ is even higher than in case of a no control. It happens. Sometimes uh, by helping some process, you also get a higher throughput, but I don't want to dive into this too. Same results here and, uh, and here. So this is, uh, uh, these are bandwidth tests in case the interferers do sequential I.O. Sequential reads, sequential write, and the uh, target does random reads or uh, sequential uh, reads, just trying all possible combinations. This is the same, but in this case, interferers do random I.O. <laughs> the same results, I don't want to uh, bother you. There is only one apparently strange result here where I.O. cost has a higher total throughput. Do you know why? It's because it has lost control. As you can see, the target gets all the throughput. So it's choking the interferers. The target happens to do sequential reads and sequential reads reach the maximum possible throughput. That's why the throughput is very high. It's, it's exactly equal to the throughput we know your control because for some reason here IO cost is failing to control IO. Um, results with the hard disk, uh, again, same story. Uh, much higher throughput, uh, an inversion here for the same reason as before, but in this case it's the target that is getting nothing, 0 0.032. Uh, and for this reason the total throughput is higher because the target does random I.O. while the interferers do sequential I.O. So they, you get more if you don't serve the random I.O. For the rest, usual results. Um, and also in case of um, interferers doing random I.O. It's always the same story. If one looks at the numbers, I think that in some cases uh, with uh, BFQ, the target gets something like 100 times more throughput than with I.O. cost. IO cost. Uh, these are the comments that I've already uh, done. Um, I uh, um, run these tests also with uh, the faster uh, drive, the NVMe drive and other NVMe drives. With better FS, results were mixed probably because of uh, the same problems shown by these plots. Like for example, uh, um, uh, here, I don't know whether you can see the numbers, this is almost zero, this is much more. Uh, 100 times more, something like that, or uh, the total loss of control uh, in this in this case here. The problem is that uh, uh, the author of IO cost um, didn't acknowledge these problems, and basically he hints at uh, unspecified problems in all the systems on which I've run tests. So until these. Uh, uh, issues are somehow solved that they want to analyze uh, more in depth. Okay, this is also um, according to these new results, BFQ keeps being better or much better than uh, alternatives, uh, but there are obstacles to uh, penetration in the enterprise, in enterprise environment, basically uh, because of a conservative attitude, which is, I mean, there are good reasons to, to be conservative, uh, at least in general. More uh, um, precisely, uh, one of the problems is that there have been these suboptimal solutions for a lot of time, and they have become common practices now. Uh, 
then there is the problem of private solutions for which it is impossible to make any comparison. Uh, a very technical problem is that <laughs> several times I had just the impression that they didn't believe me <laughs> or fully believe me, let's say so. And I, 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 th I really think this is all and uh, thank you for listening and any feedback is very welcome. Thank you.